Now we turn to number nine in our series on the three cosmic messages. And this is focusing on Revelation 17 and 18. But of course, we have to look at the Old Testament to get the original story about Babylon. This is a city called Confusion. That's our title for this time. And you remember the story of the Tower of Babel and how God confused the languages because they were all working together, not for good, but for evil. And so God put a stop to that by dissipating the people around the world through different language. And this city called Confusion is a great title because that defines, I think, all that is wrong with what you might call apostate religion, a religion that is not towards God, but is against God. All the various false religions that misrepresent God are summed up here in the book of Revelation under the picture, the title of the prostitute that is called Babylon. Revelation 17, 1. One of the seven angels with the seven bowls came and talked with me. Come here, he said, and I will show you the judgment on the infamous prostitute that sits beside many waters and so on. The kings of the earth have committed adultery with her and those who are, live on the earth became drunk on the wine of her immorality. And this confusion, false religion, immorality all go together. In fact, in the Old Testament, this immorality, this going after the harlot, as the old versions used to say, was symbolic of spiritual adultery. There in verse 15 too, let's take a look at that, the, where it says, the angel went on to explain to me, the waters that you saw where the harlot was sitting represent peoples, crowds of people, nations and languages. So these waters, symbolic of many, many people, that's what is in view here. The main point is, though, that this is coming to an end in Revelation 18. After this, I saw another angel descending from heaven. He had great power and the earth was lit up by his glory. He shouted out in a powerful voice, what? Babylon the Great has collapsed into ruins. She has become a place where demons live, the refuge of every unclean spirit and the roost of every unclean and detestable bird. For all the nations have drunk the wine of her mad sexual immorality. The kings of the earth have committed adultery with her and the traders of the earth have grown rich from her excessive sensuality. So there you have it. The, the perspective that this false system of religion is going to come to an end. That God is going to intervene. The angel represents God coming in to say, OK, enough. And Babylon falls because it has no real basis. You see, that's the point in truth or in fact. It is just the negation of religion. It's all that is opposed to God. Remember when Satan rebelled there in heaven, he was misrepresenting God and saying this is what God is like, which of course was not true. His whole religion, if you want to call it that, is based on lies, lies particularly about God. And that's where I think we come in in terms of being part of the vindication of God. Yes, we can read about Babylon and how Babylon has this symbol all through history and in opposition to Jerusalem and New Jerusalem and so on. Jerusalem, Babylon, those are the two great centers of either true religion or false religion. But when it comes down to us today, we are still part of that, aren't we? Uh, there's a quote from Bob Marley. I don't often get to quote him, but he said, Babylon is everywhere. You have wrong and you have right. Wrong is what we call Babylon, wrong things. That is what Babylon is to me. I could have been born in England. I could have been born in America. It make no difference where me born because there is Babylon everywhere. And isn't that so true? All around us, we see Babylon. And the point is to hold up the truth as revealed in Jesus, who came to show us the Father, as a way of dispelling the myth 
of Babylon to demonstrate that it has no basis, it cannot survive, it will fall. And with that, God himself will be shown to be true and right and just, and he will be vindicated.